So here is a premise record for a particular digital object. What we have, as in all of the XML files that we've looked at so far, is this header which declares this to be an XML document and declares a couple of XML namespaces, one of which LC is on the Library of Congress's site, the rest are uh, owned by the W3C. The XML schema location is located on the Library of Congress's own servers. And we're not going to parse the whole XML schema document because that's quite lengthy. Let's look at the first object identifier. First of all, we have object identifier value. We have a, it's not a URL, but it is an address. You can tell that it's an address because it has the familiar slash that separates you know, file name from directory. So the value of this object's identifier is that address. We have preservation level, full. Preservation level date assigned 2007-05-29, right? Preservation level value comes from a controlled vocabulary. So whatever full means in the context of that controlled vocabulary, we're saying this particular object gets the full treatment. We have significant properties, significant properties type, behavior, properties value, hyperlinks traversable. That's a significant property. All of the hyperlinks in this object need to continue to be active over time. That's an important significant property. We have format, format name, TIFF version six. That's what format this object is in. Uh, creating application, scanned all version 4.14 created on this particular date. So we're getting a sense for the characteristics and the history of this particular digital object. When was it created? What piece of software was it created with? What are the characteristics of this object that we think need preservation over the long term? Storage, content location, and it gives you know, a particular server storage medium, disk, environment, software, Adobe Acrobat, software, Windows, hardware, Intel, right? So not only do we get software recommendations, we get hardware recommendations as well. So in order to do preservation of this object, recommendations are being made. Here is the server where this object lives. And here are recommendations for not only the software, but also the hardware in which this piece of, this particular digital object should live over the long term. Relationships. Relationship type is sibling. And it is sibling to this object. Another relationship is sibling to this other object. So now we have a better sense for this particular object that's being described in this record. So not only do we have recommendations for preservation, we have relationships with other digital objects, siblings of this particular object. Now down at the bottom, finally, we come to linking intellectual entity identifier value, and we have a full-blown URL. That is the address of this particular entity, and we'll look at that in a moment. Notice that what we've been looking at all along has been an object, right? The 
top level element is object. Now let's scroll down to the bottom and look at an event in the lifetime of this particular object. Event type, migration. Event date time, that date in 2006. So now we know that on that particular date in 2006, this digital object was migrated. Migration, or I should say event type, is another element in premise that recommends a controlled vocabulary. So other terms from that particular controlled vocabulary are things like creation, deletion, decryption. So you get a controlled vocabulary of things that might be done to a file. Event detail, Adobe Photoshop. So we know that this migration happened using the Adobe Photoshop software. Event outcomes, successful, hooray. It was a successful migration using Adobe Photoshop, right? So we are starting to get this very rich sense of the history of this particular digital object. And every time this object is touched and something happens to it, then another event will be created like this one. So over time, you get a history of the digital object. And up above in the object block, you get recommendations for what to do for preservation. So recommendations for what to do for future events. Let's actually look at the digital object that this record is describing. And it is this. And you can see that because the identifier is the same identifier as what we got in the premise record. So this record is Portrait of Louis Armstrong. So what we have here is a digital object, that is to say this image with two metadata records, maybe more, but we know about two. We have this descriptive metadata record and we have the premise record that we just looked at. So remember way back to unit one, the one-to-one -one principle, the idea that a single object should have a single metadata record. And this would seem to be in violation of that, but it is not so. This is really not a violation of the one-to-one -one principle because we have two metadata records in two different metadata schemas, this one and premise. So you certainly wouldn't want two premise records because that would be confusing. You certainly wouldn't want two, say, Dublin Core records because that would be confusing. But one descriptive record and one preservation record, that actually serves two quite different functions. And so that is not a violation of the one-to-one -one principle. Remember that metadata is statements that you can make about an object. Statements that you can make in premise are statements about preservation of an object. When those modifications were made and with what software, where the object is stored, what recommendations are there for displaying it, using it, what significant properties need to be preserved, etc., etc. So there's your use case for premise. Preservation of digital objects, history of preservation of objects, and recommendations for future preservation. Premise is descriptive, yes, but it's also administrative. It's basically instructions for care and feeding of digital objects.